in October, a uh, freshman Democrat Katie Hill, who had just flipped a Republican seat last year, announced that she was stepping down from Congress after acknowledging a romantic relationship with a campaign staffer and being accused of a relationship with a congressional staffer, which she denied. But the real driver of her exit from Congress so quickly were the images of revenge porn uh, that was reportedly shopped around to various places before being published by several conservative media outlets, clearly with the intent of shaming and bullying her out of Congress. And in her farewell, Katie Hill expressed remorse and frustration and anger at what she called a double standard for how men and women in the public eye are treated. And joining me now to talk about her experience and this political moment is the former Democratic Congresswoman from California's Orange County, Katie Hill. Um, I, I I feel I want to just start at like a human level of how are you doing? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, listen, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's been hard. It's been really hard. You have something that you and so many people that you care about and love worked so hard for for such a long time. Um, and then within an instant, it's totally gone. Right. And, um, you have to take stock and, and regroup about what your life's going to look like moving forward. And um, I don't just feel that for myself. I feel that for a lot of people. So, um, but, you know, and I feel like it's really important for me uh, on on behalf of the people who worked so hard for me um, to stand back up and make sure that I continue to fight. Do you regret uh, stepping down? I don't regret it. I think it was the right thing to do um, for a number of different reasons. One of which is that I think there's, uh, there was no way for me to continue working as well as I could uh, with the amount of distraction that this was going to continue to provide. This was fodder for, you know, um, right wing operatives. And, uh, you know, as, as we were literally the day that I took my last vote was on impeachment and on moving forward with the impeachment inquiry. And uh, I knew that I was going to be basically bait or um, uh, some kind of distraction against, you know, what what was really important. And. Um, you know, the, my, my ex had made it clear that there were hundreds of other images and text messages, and I didn't even know what those were, right? I don't know that they existed, but the amount of stress that it was putting on to my family, onto my, you know, my, my supporters, onto my staff, and, and even onto, I, I was supposed to be the freshman representative to leadership. How could I be the freshman representative to a lot of these people who were in tough seats, when they were going to have to go home and answer questions right. about who is this person that you were, you know, working with. Um, well, I think what happened to you in terms of what those images was despicable, but there was an accusation of, of an ethical breach, which is that there was an inappropriate relationship with a congressional aide, which would have been subject to ethical jurisdiction. And I think there's a reason that the, those ethical lines, but did that happen? Well, no. And, and I, I have said many times that the entire ethics investigation started because of a claim from my estranged husband. That was it. There was no report from my office. There That's no what initiated report. it. That was initiated. And, and I actually have, and I said this to the chair of the Ethics Committee, I have a real problem with this, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. I don't think some random person making accusations should launch an ethics investigation because it's incredibly invasive. It's something that's a big, big deal for not just you, but for your staff as well that there should be some kind of an actual basis for it, that a, a vengeful ex of some kind or just a, a random, you know, p political operative can't be the one who in, instigates a, a, an investigation like that. So, um, yeah, I think it's highly problematic, and um, and but they're able to start that for, for whatever reason, and they said that, well, there were public, you know, publicly made accusations, and so we have to launch this, but that was a, a huge, huge... Um, it, you know, it, it was an interference in the work, and it was something that was highly, um, you know, stressful, and, and we didn't know what all could could happen with that, especially if there were going to continue to be images and claims, and, and if there was no boundary, apparently, on what they could be. And I mean, it, it, you're literally opening yourself and your staff up to every single text message, every single, you know, photo, every single everything that you've ever said by going through an investigation like that. I think what, one thing that struck me uh, that... Uh, when when this happened was how, how old are you i am 32 you're 32 um uh that there's a generation of people that um use smartphones differently uh there are generation of people who have millions of texts and images of them in um environments with partners internet partners or not whatever uh that now are going to enter into public life mm -hmm. where this will hang like a sort of damocles yep. do you think 
it's the kind of thing we will evolve over or will it be used as this essentially this kind of like gendered means of shaming women? Well, that was my biggest concern coming out of this is that, you know, the, the pictures that that were used against me were not even ones that I knew were taken. They weren't even selfies that I took and sent to somebody else, right? They were ones that I didn't even know existed. And you can tell that from looking at the images. But um, but there are, but I have taken images like that, right? And I'm not even ashamed to say yeah. that I've taken images and sent images like that. And so have, I think the, the numbers show, regardless of your age, I think over 80% of people have done that. So um, let's not pretend that this is some taboo thing that people aren't doing. But what we do need to say is that who is it being used against? And it's overwhelmingly women. This is this whole concept of cyber exploitation and revenge porn. But mine is the first real example where it's been used against a public figure, especially a political figure, and then the images are published by mainstream by a mainstream publication, by a significant publication. And that's the reason that I think the legal action that we're pursuing is going to be so, so important, um, because I don't think that this is an acceptable precedent that can be set. I, you know, I'm all for the First Amendment. That is something that I don't think that we can question in any way, shape, or form. But there is a line, and it comes down to fundamental human decency. And um, and you know, are you are you enabling or empowering somebody who is is literally using this to abuse you and to take you down, um, and putting that out for the world to see, and and in the in the most vulnerable state that you could possibly be in, uh, that in and of itself is going to discourage people from running if we don't do something to stop it. And so we are pursuing everything that we can against Red State and against, um, you know, against the Daily Mail, and uh, that's going to be a fight. Um, I want to I talk about some other stuff, too. Um, you, 